This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle-tested nutrition. Expert formulated supplements. Use code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. When you talk about food efficiency, I, you know, I, I, I kind of use myself as a guinea pig sometimes. I, I know this, it's probably stupid at my age, but uh, this past, <laughs> this past off season, um, you know, sometimes I think I'm like borderline diabetic or pre, uh, pre-diabetic or whatever. And, and I, I felt like my limiting factor before was, was how I was partitioning nutrients. And I really, uh, I played around, I know it's not your suggested protocol, but I played around with uh, running uh, Lantus daily and, and pushing my metformin doses higher. And I was splitting those doses up throughout the day to keep, keep constant levels of the metformin through. And then, you know, on the high days, I would put the human log in as necessary. And I, I'll be honest with you, man, that, that combined with the, with the high volume training, I think that's why I packed on so much fucking weight, Justin. It, it is. And I'll give like, I'll give a couple caveats with that. Uh, first, I use less gear too, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Well, I mean, for the most part, what happens, everyone knows that there's a pretty hard limit. Everyone knows the term test flu, right? Yeah. And if, if that wasn't a common thing, people wouldn't know it. Well, if you have the flu, you're not going to grow. Right. If you have a fever, and you're achy, you can't eat and you're lethargic. You can't train. That, how are you going to grow? There's, there's So at, at that point, it's the gear is essentially useless or it could be counterproductive even, you know? So there's, there is a, a line and some people have a higher tolerance and that, but everyone has heard that term, which means it's a common thing that gets encountered. But as far as the insulin, yes, what you're 100% correct. The, the caveat with that though, is that what the reason I don't like the Lantus is that this sport isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. Right. And you get, you get about 10 years tops of, of, of pushing, especially the growth hormone insulin before you get to the point of uh, insulin sensitivity issues. And I don't want to use the word plum, plumbalism, but I don't, you know, acromegaly, I guess, acromegal, acromegalic uh, symptoms from the GH, you get about 10 years max before those things come in. And so, and max, meaning if you're smart about it, if you push it too hard, it can be even quicker than that. And you can see this with, if you look like a Jay Cutler from 2001 to 2011, you know, there's, there's that start, start to come. Yeah. You can go 2001 was when he really went, really went to task with things. You look at Ronnie from 96 to 2006. Um, uh, and if Phil Heath fell apart too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Phil Heath's another one. Master of Sambadi. They're all Marcus rule. It's like, it's right. It's right at that 10 year mark. So you have to be really, uh, I don't know the word, the word really make sure you, what you're doing is what you're doing. Cause if you're 21 and you put that 10 year, you, right. you start that 10 years at 21, you're at 31, you're falling off a cliff and you're still eight years away from your peak as a bodybuilder. So you lose your entire career of money-making of physique of winning contests, all because you wanted to get there a little quicker in your twenties. Uh, and so that's, that's my thing with the Lantus. Can I say real quick with the metformin also, what I don't like about the metformin is it works in uh, cyclic AMP, which is an anti-inflammatory process, uh, sort of, it's sort of like how, what NSAIDs work through that's anti-hypertrophy that's count, counter to muscle growth. And so metformin actually ne- counters hy- hypertrophy. It, it works against muscle growth. Now I use the phrase, it's like adding a deck chair to the Titanic. You know, if you're on gear, it's not going to reverse muscle growth, obviously, but it, it isn't helping it. And so that's why I like to use berberine and not to tell my supplements, but I don't know if I have one over here, <laughs> but yeah, that's why. So, cause berberine actually works through IGF one. Uh, which is actually more insulinogenic on a milligram per milligram basis than actual insulin. You know, what's funny is I know, I know metformin supposedly suppresses IGF one. And I, I, I'm just using these cheap ass Chinese blue tops, Justin. And I went, uh, I had my blood work done recently. My, my IGF one levels were 501. Well, that's kind of the deck chair on the Titanic. Yes. It suppresses <laughs> IGF one, but if you're taking, you know, exogenous GH, it's, same thing. Like you, you can remove a deck chair from the Titanic, and technically the Titanic weighs less, but it, it it's not really a noticeable difference. Well, so those things do. It does reduce IGF one, but it's not. You know, you have to take things into context. How high have you raised IGF one with other things? Yeah. So I've used I used berberine too. Uh, I I think I talked to your partner this weekend, but he we we um uh, he's going to send me some of the. Uh, 
some of the uh, glucose disposal yeah, the suppressor. Is yeah. suppressor that you have. I'm going to try that out too, but I, I, I have used berberine, berberine quite a bit, but I, you know, part of me wonders too, if guys don't fuck themselves up from pushing so much food and not managing glucose levels. I know a lot of guys aren't paying attention to it. Oh yeah. That's part of the 10 year thing. Cause even there's, I mean, there's only so much you can do if, you know, like I'm somewhere I'm like your high day was probably close to a thousand grams. Yeah, a thousand, right yeah. around a thousand. So you're putting a thousand grams in your body of carbs and adding insulin on top of that. It doesn't matter how hard you train, how much cardio you do. You know, that's that's a pathway to, to diabetes. I mean, it just is. If you you want to take some Joe off the street and have him eating a thousand grams of carbohydrates, you know, and let's say he wasn't taking insulin, but his body naturally produced too much insulin. I mean, that is what causes diabetes. You know, that's causes the tissues to be desensitized. <clears throat> so you have to be on top of improving that, sen that, that sensitization. And that's, that's a big thing people don't understand is because the insulin, you know, like insulin is a molecule. It's a hormone that floats around, you know, and right. it, 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 it exerts its action by it binds to a receptor on the cell. When it binds to that receptor, you know, it, it sends a signal that shuttles some proteins in the shell, in the cell and let nutrients come in. So it's a two-step process. And so when these receptors get desensitized, that's the early diabetes. And that's when blood sugar will start rising because there's, because the sugar can't get taken up by the cell because the insulin's, when insulin binds to it, it doesn't exert the same effect. And so the, like the one thought would be, okay, well, I'll add more insulin. And that solves the problem early on. The problem is, is the, it's the insulin that's causing the desensitization. So right. if you don't have it, if you don't have something working on those receptors as well, it, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. You know, you walk, you're, you're walking on an escalator that's going the wrong way. You can run really fast, but eventually, you know, you're going to tire out. I mean, my thought process was, and maybe I'm off base about this, and this is just kind of me thinking, I, I have an engineer's brain, but I, thinking that, I, you know, if I, if I were uh, a young bodybuilder, I would want to maintain maximum insulin sensitivity and take pressure off of my, uh, the beta cell in the pancreas from burning out. I think a lot of guys just end up frying, 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 frying their beta cells out, man, and, and can't make enough insulin to keep up with the food they're eating anymore. So I don't, I don't know, you know, I thought I, you know, and I've seen some studies and some information on it. People are starting to consider prophylactic use of human log to prevent some of that. So yeah, uh, well, there's, well, that's an interesting thing. I don't know what the long-term consequence is though. Well, that's the, 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 the I don't, that's, that's an interesting one because the, the, uh, the beta cells don't, the, they do get burned out, but they don't get burned out. That, that, that's a secondary, uh, like type one diabetes. Well, you, you know, and that, and there's, there's things with that and there's autoimmune actions that happen and you can get, and actually you've seen that a lot with COVID now, actually. Yeah. One of the interesting responses with COVID is the body uh, deciding that the beta cells, so the way the beta, they don't really get burned out. What happens is the body sees them as a, as a, as a, foreign substance it's an autoimmune response and then it starts attacking them as a foreign substance and that's typically in response to like an illness or something and so it's, it's rarely that the uh, i hate saying these things because because there's always a a, a a counter case to everything but it's rarely the lack of it's rarely the inability to produce insulin it's almost right. always the desensitization of the tissues uh and so what i, what I, I want to say because I'm, I'm not saying what you're doing is incorrect and it's it's age dependent because because you're not 21 years old right so if, when you get to the point where, you know, if you're in your thirties, you have less than a decade till you're at your peak at that point, that's the time to, to, to pull, to take the brakes off because that is the time to do it. Right. I right. Just, yes. I just, people watching this, that's why I always like try, I, I, I word that perfect, poorly uh, because, you know, it's, it's, it's an age thing. If you're in that 10 year span where, you know, at the end of 10 years, you're going to be over your, you know, you're 42 or whatever, and that's past your bodybuilding peak anyways, that's the time to do these things. If you're short more than, more than 10 years away from your limitation, I don't like over overworking the first, I don't like overdoing the insulin portion. I want to focus on the receptor portion. Yeah. I mean, if it's unnecessary, you know, you know don't put, you know, Less drugs is always better for your health long term. I mean, that's just really that simple. But well, there, the problem is, there's. Uh, I probably should have, like. I don't think I worded this properly. There's certain things that you can't avoid in the sport if you want to go as far right. as you can go. And so it's not. It's not. It's less of a don't do them. It's a more of a make sure you're doing them at the right age range, which you are in that age range. Uh, oh, dude, I, I'm 48. <laughs> Yeah. Are you that old? I yeah. You like, oh, I thought you were like 39 or something. No, oh, man. I you were like young, a little younger than me. Yeah. So you're. You're. Yeah, you got another worry about. 
but uh, but it's but I I do not I am not a huge fan of metformin, uh, especially when there's uh, receptor action products like berberine that I think not a milligram for milligram basis, but I think fifteen hundred milligrams of, of berberine tends to produce about the same effects as a thousand milligrams of metformin, but the action is through IGF one to improve receptor sensitivity rather than uh, the than on cyclic AMP. Yeah. <laughs> I did notice my glucose levels uh, did drop when I when I added berberine to it. So what what is in your your product? What do you guys have in your uh, your glucose? Uh, uh, so, so we have uh, berberine, and it's fifteen hundred milligrams, which is the dose that I have over you know a decade or more of using this with clients. I've tried all types of things, you know, and, and it, it always settled on about fifteen hundred milligrams seems to produce the same improvement in A one C and uh, and and fasted glucose and even post-meal glucose readings as a thousand milligrams of metformin. But we also have cinnamon powder, uh, which cinnamon kind of helps uh, increase the bioavailability of the uh, berberine. And then we have biopurine. It's not biopurine, it's black pepper. Biopurine is a brand name you can't really get, but the black pepper does the same thing. Uh, and then we have fenugreek, which fenugreek actually, uh, Fenugreek actually works, is one of the few supplements that works on the first pathway to increase insulin production. Uh, and so I went through this whole spiel about focusing on the receptor, but we actually do work through the first pathways. Pathway. Yeah. Uh, fenugreek actually works at kind of produce, increase the body's insulin response in, in response to carbohydrates. And it's got a ton of cool benefits. It's actually really good for, uh, for breastfeeding women, actually. It, it helps increase their milk production through that same kind of pathway. I don't think berberine is good for breastfeeding though. So I wouldn't recommend this for breastfeeding women, just that one product. And then our alpha lipoic acid, our ALA, which has been around forever, is a very good GDA. I don't know if you saw today, there was a headline on CNN about uh, uh, metformin that they, they uh, found, a, they did a long-term study and found that it increases birth defects no, with, no uh, with men. It causes uh, uh, mutations to sperm, evidently. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I, there's a lot of interesting things about metformin. See, the thing is, is, is insulin is an aging hormone. I mean, it really is, uh, it, you know, because it accelerates the it accelerates the processes in the body. And that's really what aging is, is generally an acceleration, you know, that you have so many things that can happen in your body. And then it, as the more of them happen, you're ticking off a number, basically. But uh, I mean, that's really not what it is. It involves telomeres and stuff. But uh, the metformin's got a lot of really interesting anti-aging benefits. And there's a lot of studies in, in, uh, in how it affects aging, uh, especially in women. Uh, but again, aging, it, <laughs> hypertrophy is a kind of an aging process also. And so it's still, again, count, is kind of counter to that. That's the problem is you always like, people use the word health, you know, and something like it's healthy and health means that that is such a loaded word because do you mean health is in how long I'm gonna live? Because it's relative. Yeah, the way you approach things, if you want to be healthy to live a long time, is completely different than if you want to be healthy, meaning you want to be incredibly active and live a vigorous you know, life, lifestyle, which is entirely different if you think healthy means, you know, you want to be able to run a long distance or healthy means you want to have a low body weight or whatever it is, you know, they're all, they're not even, and they're not even the, not even related because the, like the, the practices and the dietary practices are, are completely different in some, some ways, because the way to live the longest is basically to eat as close to starving to death as possible without actually starving to death. And so if you think health has anything to do with being like, you know, your, your vigor or your energy levels or anything like that, then living a long time is counter to that. I, that's what I tell these guys all the time. They come to me and ask me for advice, uh, talk about longevity and bodybuilding. I'm like, dude, you're in the wrong fucking sport, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is a, you're, you're not doing anything to increase longevity. No, no, I, no. Uh, now you can reduce risk. But, uh, you know, if you're smart about how you yeah. do things, it, but and that's one of the key things, the, the working on the insulin receptor is one of the key things that we can do to kind of reduce the, the aging effects that we do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, so much, if you, when you look, look at the scientific literature, so, so many poor health, health outcomes are related to, um, poor, poor glucose control. Oh yeah. Well, that's, what's crazy. It's like, uh, I mean, I, I always, it blows my mind when people don't want to drink diet sodas, you know, uh, or yeah, they're worried you know, about like, cancer, but they don't yeah, care about and, fucking you know, diabetes. Half of us, one in two, half of us are going to die of obesity related illness. And almost all of those are, are include uh, insulin sensitivity issues and, and diabetes and elevated blood sugar. So, you know, whatever you think the risk of dying of cancer is, if it's, unless it's one in two, unless it's a 50% chance, 
you're better off taking the diet soda. I mean, it, it blows my mind when people stop process and that, that cause that's what, especially in America, that's what we're all gonna die from. We're all gonna die from, from insulin basically. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle-tested nutrition, expert formulated supplements. Use code AB10 at checkout for 10% off.